This meeting is being recorded. Good morning, everyone. Today we'll be looking at another examinable question, a comprehensive question on group accounts. And the aspects we are going to focus on is on the consolidated statement of financial position. In part one, we had a discussion on the acquisition of a subsidiary that occurred during the year, and we we're able to make justification to that alongside various adjustments that are required in the course of presenting the consolidated statement of financial position as at the reporting date. This morning, we will look at another question from different perspective in order to address our concern of the same subject. The question before us, I'm going to read it out and I will want us to make some marks, some jotting and whatsoever we need to do so that we can be able to extract relevant information in the course of our discussion. But the first thing I'm going to do is to drop this question, a copy of it, on the Zoom chat for you to pick up and kindly confirm to me immediately you were able to pick it up so that we can continue from there. A kindly confirm if you have picked them up. Please confirm so that we can proceed. Please kindly confirm. Okay, if I has received, who else is confirming? Take note, if you are making use of phone, I don't think you will be able to access it. Otherwise, you might screen grab your screen and save it so that you can always make reference to it. I could see diary confirming, I could see Modupe confirming, which means we can proceed. Now, I'll take opportunity to read this question and um, we'll move on from there. On 1st April 2011, Asna acquired 80% of Chelsea's equity shares by means of an immediate 10 million, uh, 10 million share exchange of its own shares, a cash payment of 88 Cobo per acquired share, differed on the 1st of April, 2012. The share price of Arsenal as at 1st of April, 2011, was 2 Naira 40 Kobo. Arsenal has neither recorded the share exchange nor the cash consideration. Arsenal cost of capital or order rates is 10 percent per annum now for those just coming in they they are unable to see it therefore i'm also going to upload it again okay i've done that kindly check okay the summarized statement of financial position of three companies as at 31st march 2012 are we're given the balance sheet of Asna, Chelsea, and Baca. We have the assets broken down into non-current, which make up, which is made up of property, plant, and equipment. Investments, we have referred to note two. Furthermore, we have current assets made up of inventory, we are referred to note three. Trade and other receivable, we are referred to note three. Cash and cash, equivalent, we are equally referred to note three. 
and we have our total assets. And this is financed by our equity and liabilities. And our equity comprises of share capital and reserves, which is made up of our ordinary share capital, our share premium, and our retained earnings. And this retained earnings is broken down similar to what we experienced yesterday by not lumping it up, but rather we are provided with the retained earnings brought forward. And we are also provided with the profit for the year that was retained, which means the addition of the two will give us our retained profit at the end of the year. Also, we have no current liabilities and we have two items under that. The first item is 11% bond and we are referred to note two. And we also have a different tax liability. And furthermore, we have current liabilities and the only item under it is trade and other payables and we are equally referred to note three. Our total equity and liabilities equal our total assets. And we are provided with the following information deemed and considered to be relevant. Note one, as at the date of acquisition, Arsenal conducted a fair value exercise on Chelsea's net assets, which were equal to their carrying amount with the following exceptions. One, an item of plant had a fair value of 3 million above its carrying amount at the date of acquisition. It had a remaining life of five years. We are required to ignore different tax relating to this fair value. Two, Chelsea had an unrecorded different tax liability of 1 million naira, which was unchanged as of 31st March 2012. Furthermore, the accounting policy for ASNA in the measurement of non-controlling interest is at fair value as at acquisition date. For this purpose, a share price for Chelsea of 3 and 50 each is representative of the fair value of the shares held by the non-controlling interest. Note two, the investment of ASNA are made up of shares held in Chelsea, shares held in Baca, shares held in other entities, and bonds held in Chelsea. Immediately after the acquisition, Chelsea issued 4 million of 11% bond, 2.5 million of which was bought by Arsenal. All interest due on loan note as at 31st March 2012 has been paid and received. Arsenal bought 1.5 million shares in Baca on 1st October 2011 for the sum of 6 million naira. And as at 31st of March 2012, Baca retained profit had increased by 2 million over the value on 1st October 2011. The other equity investment of Asna are carried at their fair value on 1st of April 2011. And as at 31st March 2012, this had increased to 2.8 million. Note three, Asna sells goods to Chelsea at a cost plus 50% profit. Below is a summary of the recorded activities for the year ended 31st March 2012 and respective balances as at same date. We have information about Arsenal and Chelsea with respect to sales to Chelsea, which is made by Arsenal, and conversely, purchases from Arsenal as made by Chelsea. Included in Arsenal receivable, which means there is intercompany balance between Arsenal and Chelsea, of which Arsenal claim a receivable of 4.4 million, whereas Chelsea claim a payable of 4.7 million. On 28 March 2012, Arsenal sold and dispatched goods to Chelsea 
which Chelsea did not call until they were received on the 3rd of April, 2012. Chelsea's inventory was counted on 31st March, 2012, and does not include any of these goods purchased from Arsenal. On 30th of March, 2012, Chelsea remitted to Arsenal a cash payment, which was not received by Arsenal until 2nd of April, 2012. This payment accounted for the remaining difference in the current account. Arsenal sold goods valued at 4 million naira to Baka at a margin of 10% on the 25th of March 2012. And as at 31st March 2012, 25% of these goods had been sold. Not for. Impairment tests were carried out on the 30th of March 2012, which revealed that the goodwill was impaired by the sum of 2.4 million naira. Required. Prepare the consolidated statement of financial position for Arsenal as a 31st March 2012. Okay, we are going to pick it one by one and uh, we move on. Okay, I believe everyone has a question by now. Okay. I will share my whiteboard screen and we'll move on from there. Kindly put your own copy on one side so that we can also relate with that. Okay. <clears throat> the group structure. Now, for us to define the group structure, we need to define that we have three entities. We have Arsenal, we have Chelsea, and we have Barker. What kind of relationship exists between Arsenal and Chelsea, and Arsenal and Barker, if any? Now, but if you refer to note two, Note two explain the investments of Arsenal. And if you check the notes, the investment of Arsenal could be subgrouped into two. Investment in shares, which will be considered equity investment. 
an investment in bond, which we consider a debt investment. Now, the investment in shares, which is the equity investment were done in more than one entity. I won't break it down. We can group it into three, according to the information. We invested in the shares of Chelsea, invested in the shares of Baca, and in other entities. Why the bond was only invested in Chelsea. Now we move further. We're giving information. The information says that immediately after the acquisition, Chelsea issued 4 million Naira bond of 11%. But 2.5 billion of that 4 million was subscribed to by ASNA, which implies that the investment made in Chelsea bond was 2.5 million naira. That is worthy of note. Okay, furthermore, we are told that Asna bought 1.5 million shares in Baca on October 1st, 2011, for the sum of 6 million, which means the equity investment made in Baca was 6 million. We take note of that. The other equity investment of Asna are carried at fair value as at 1st April 2011, which in this case, we don't have such information. We are only given information that the fair value has increased to 2.8 at the end of the year, which means presently, this is unknown. And likewise, information about our acquisition of Chelsea has once revealed to us that this has not been accounted for, which means it's unknown, but we are provided with the details of the transaction of the acquisition. Now let's go back to our first paragraph of the question, which provides us details of the acquisition. My ex represents Asna's investment in the ordinary shares of Chelsea. Now let's pick it one by one. Asna acquired 80% in Chelsea. Stake in Chelsea. is 80%. Let us ask ourselves, how many shares do we have in Chelsea? If you go to the balance sheet, Chelsea has a capital of 8 million naira. And the nominal price is one naira per share. Hence, we have eight million shares in Egypt by Chelsea. Of that eight million shares, Asna acquired 80%. 
number of Chelsea's shares acquired by Arsenal is 80% of 8 million shares, which will give me Thirty percent of eight million should give me six point four million shares. Now, but we're told that as a result of the acquisition. Arsenal exchange is ten million new shares issued for acquiring six point four million shares. of Chelsea, which means part of the consideration made by Arsenal to Chelsea, uh, to the shareholders that surrender their shares in Chelsea was a share consideration, which means there were share exchanges in the ratio where Arsenal gave out 10 million shares of its own as nearly issue and collected in lieu of that 6.4 million shares of Chelsea. What matters to us is for us to value that investment from the perspective of the consideration that was made by Asna to Chelsea. Now, what is the consideration? We need to obtain the share price of Asna as at the date the acquisition took place. And we're told from first paragraph, second line, the share price of Asna as at 1st April 2011 was 2 naira 40 kobo. And remember, the nominal price of Asna, uh, of Asna shares is 1 naira, which means given that Asna share price as at 1st of April 2011, which was the date of acquisition, was 220 Kobo. And we know that its nominal price. is one layer. Hence, there is a premium placed by the market, have you? Of how much? Of one layer, 40 cobo. How do you have at one layer, 40 cobo? That is two layer, 40 cobo minus one layer nominal price. Therefore, we can conclude that the fair value of the consideration made by Asna with respect to share exchange is 2 naira 40 kobo times how many shares did he issue? He issued 10 million shares. Asna issued 10 million shares. 10 million shares multiply by 2.4 Naira will give me 24 million Naira. And this 24 million Naira, if we break it down, to its individual components, 
you'll find out that by way of accounting entry, we recognize an equity investment in Chelsea of um, 24 million. The corresponding credits affect our equity itself. And our equity in this case is made up of share capital and share premium. The capital is one naira, if you remember, the premium is one naira 40 cobalt. If you multiply by that same 10 million shares, what you have individually is 10 million and 14 million. The sum of the two correspond to the 24 million. That is the first consideration. If we go back to the first paragraph, it says also that Apart from the share exchange, ASNA equally is to make a cash payment of 88 cobalt per every share acquired in Chelsea. But this will not be paid until 1st of April 2012, which means there is a deferred payment till next year. Which that means that the second contribution is second consideration the second consideration is deferred cash payment. Now, we need to obtain the face value or the future value of the different consideration. Remember, we are told we will pay 88 cobo. 88 cobo is 0.88. How many shares did we acquire? For every share we acquire in Chelsea, we'll still pay 88 cobo, but it will be paid at a later date. And if we go by our analysis, we found out that there are 8 million shares. There are 8 million shares in Chelsea, of which Asna acquired 6.4 million shares, which means 88 Kobo will be paid for all of the 6.4 million shares, even though it will be paid in a year time. 88 Kobo times 6.4 million will give me 5 million, 6, will give me 5 million, 5 million, 5 This tends to malfunction. Just pardon me. Okay, let me try and continue. Six, five, six, three, two million. Okay, let's move on.
Now, but we are aware that 5,632,000 is payable in a year time. But we are accounting for the consideration today. Therefore, we need to obtain the present value of the cash expected to be paid in the future. What is the present value of the DCP, which is the deferred cash payment? Remember, present value is obtained by future value discounted by the cost of capital or the discount rate by the number of years you are bringing it forward. What's our future value here? It's 5632 as a ratio divided by one point. What is our cost of capital? If we go back to the first paragraph, which is the last sentence there, after cost of capital or order rate is 10%, which means 1 plus 10% is 1.1. And remember, we are only deferred this payment for a year, which means we are discounting it back only once. If you go by this and you press your calculator as I'm doing mine, you'll find out that the present value is 5,120,000. Now, if you remember, similarly, as the share condition was not yet accounted for, we are also told that this deferred payment was also not yet accounted for. Therefore, I also have to account for it. It contributes to the equity investment made by Asma in Chelsea. And the corresponding is a liability, which is a deferred consideration which is a liability with what sum? With the sum of 5.12 million. Invariably, we can summarize below that the equity investment, the equity investment I think my screen is malfunctioning or my writing part is malfunctioning. Okay, let me save it and reopen the Word document. I will continue from there. Um, okay, I think it's back. There's still an issue.
plus here. The equity investment made by Asna in Chelsea is made up of this consideration. Remember, share exchange and default cash consideration. What is our share exchange? We are able to arrive at 24 million, if you could remember. We are at 24 million here. And here we have that the present value, which is five and one two. And that gives us what? 29120. Now I can come back here and say my X. My X is equal to 24 million. Okay, we are at that point. Now, let us go back to our question. Investment, if you go back to the balance sheet, you find out that we have investments. I will say no two. The investment in the balance sheet, who can tell me how much it is? If you know, check and tell me how much it is because I want to break something down for you guys. How much is the investment? 10.5. 10.5. Yes. Which means there are some investment in the books of Asna that were recorded other than investment in Chelsea. And those investments, I'm going to show you in this my question. And what is it? If you go back to the question, go to note two that the investment is referring to. Asna bought 1.5 million shares in Baka for 6 million. This has been recorded because there's no information of not recording it and which was included in 10.5 million. Asna also bought 2.5 million worth of bond, which was also recorded. And we are told that the other equity investments are carried at fair value, which means if 10.5 million, the all of this, the all of investment in Baka in other entities and in the bond of Chelsea. All of these have been recorded prior to now. All recorded and accounted for. But how much was it accounted for? The sum of these three was how much? Was 10.5 million. Therefore, I'll come here to say, given the recorded investments in Asna's book, for the sum of 10. Point 5 million naira. This can be broken down to, let us break it down. Remember, we are told that 
He has shares in Baka, and that was six million. Bonds in Chelsea, that gulped 2.5 million. And shares in other entity. But the problem is that is unknown as of today. Therefore, and remember the sum of these three is 10.5 million. We cannot conclude that the balancing figure is what represents the fair value of shares held in other entities as at 1st of April 2011. And what would that be? That should be 2 million, which means that is how we obtain the value here. That is where we know that our Y is 2 million. Now, that is that. The next thing is now to move into the main question. From this, we cannot draw up our group structure. What is our group structure? Remember, in a group, a group comprises of the parents and all subsidiaries. But in this question, when we look at all of this investment, first, it's only investment in shares of an entity that can give you a qualification of an acquisition if control has been obtained which means bond will not even be considered at all to establish whether there's a subsidiary in this case. Now, if you look at our stake in other entity, it does not give control. And in that situation, we cannot consider other entities as a subsidiary. Okay, now that is all. The next one, is BACA. If you look at BACA, we only have what's taking BACA. Out of the shares in BACA, how many shares do you have in BACA? Who can answer that? How many shares do you have in BACA? Five million. Five million. How do you arrive at five million? It's given. It's not, given. it's not given. What was given is share capital, not. Can you confirm it? Okay. What? Can you it's see fair. what was given is mm -hmm. what? Share, share capital of it's five million. Sure. It's not the same thing as number of shares. But coincidentally, okay. because, coincidentally, because we are having a nominal price to be oh, one naira, it now look as if you were right. But per venture, if in the examination, you now find yourself with 50 cover nominal price, at that point, there will be a problem. Be if you come ahead to take that. Therefore, in that situation, what do we do? Out of the five million, how many shares were acquired by Asna out of that five million? 1.5 million. Mm -hmm. How much? 1.5 million. 1.5. What ratio can that be considered to be? That should be. What percentage is that? 30 percent. 30 percent. 30 percent. What is it for? Can you say 30% of 
could give control without any other information to the contrary? No. Okay. Therefore, our conclusion in this case is that if 30% does not give control, what can we consider such investment to be? Investment in associates. Which means BACA is an associate. And given that BACA is an associate, it does not belong to the member of that group. Is that not? Yes. Okay. Therefore, it means I can read it and say, Baka, I'm coming, I'm trying to upload the question for those that just joined. Please check it. I've uploaded the question. Kindly confirm receipts. Okay, let me go back to my own slide. Okay, which means Baka does not qualify. Other entities do not qualify. Did Chelsea qualify? Yes. yes. Why? Because there's yes, a majority. How, how many stake? 80%. 80% what? Percent. Therefore, in this case, in our structure, in our structure, yeah, there's only one subsidiary, which means Asna, the parent, Chelsea, the subsidiary. That is 80%, which make me recognize other interest to be non-controlling, 20%. Mm -hmm. When is the date of acquisition? The acquisition what? of April. Chelsea was 1st of April 2011. Okay. And when are we reporting as our date of consolidation? 31st of March 2012, which is exactly here. Okay. Yeah. Which means in this case, we are not caught unaware and we don't have issue of acquisition during mm, the year. Yeah. Now, the next order for us is to say. What is Chelsea's reserve? As at today. If you go back to the balance sheet, Chelsea's reserve as at today is the opening reserve plus the profit for the year, which is 18 million plus. 8 million, which give me what? 26 million. And this 26 million, I have to split it into pre acquisition and what? Post acquisition. Even though the examiner has already splitted it for me, how do I know? If we go back to the question, If you go back to the question, if you see here, this was the date of acquisition, and we're given the reserve to be what? 80. And this other eight arose subsequent to acquisition. In that situation or instance, I cannot go ahead to recognize the same, which means the analysis I'm doing may not be necessary because it's already broken down for me. But I still need to show it so that we can have a better appreciation. Okay, that is that. What next? What next for us is to look at additional information, starting from one. Note one says that the requirement of IFRS 3 was complied with with respect to obtaining the fair value of all asset and liabilities acquired as at acquisition date. 
And we are told that they have their fair value and kind amount equal with the exception of these two items. One, there was a plant that had a fair value of 3 million naira above the kind amount. And therefore, we need to account for this, which means fair value adjustments at acquisition. The first one is plants. The plant has a fair value which will increase the group value of plants. And it will be an adjustment to increase our pre-acquisition reserve. Which is what? Three million. That is one. The second one the second one is deferred tax. Can somebody mute there? The second one is deferred tax. We are told that before now, a different tax liability of 1 million was unrecorded. And now, what do you have to do to recognize it? And when you're recognizing a liability for the first time, what is the impact? It means that a different tax liability arose from the fact that there is a different tax charge, which means there's a charge to your profit or loss to increase your income tax, which means my profit has been overstated. To now restate it is to debit my pre-acquisition reserve. Remember, all of these are adjustments arising from acquisition. Therefore, they affect ultimately the pre-acquisition reserve. Here, I recognize my deferred tax ability. How much? One million. Now, stop going to acquisition. What has the effect of this favor subsequently? You remember that the asset blew upward by 3 million. It then means that it will result in me adding more depreciation because depreciation is based on the new value. Invariably, I have to charge additional depreciation. on the plant. And I need to ask myself, what is the really useful life of the plant? We are told it's five years, which means depreciation adjustment is the additional three million will have to be spread over five years. But from the date of acquisition to today is only a year. Therefore, I will account for only a year. Supposing it was two years from today, or two years before now that we have acquired, let's say 1st of April 2010. In that case, what we will have charged adjustment on will be for two years cumulatively. In this case, what we have? 600,000 naira, which means the profit of the subsidiary will be affected further by 600,000 naira. And that will be debit the subsidiary's profits. But recall the subsidiary's profits, who are the shareholders that will burn it? That is the parent, which is Arsenal and NCI. And they will share it in the ratio 80-20. 80% of that should be 480. 20% should be 120. Which means overall, my group plant will be reduced 
by 600,000. Now for the deeper tax, we are told that it has remained unchanged, which means there's no subsequent adjustment to that. Finally, in note one, we are told that NCI is to be measured at acquisition date fair value, which means the fair value is the market price multiplied by the number of shares of Chelsea held by NCI. Now, if you go back, Chelsea shared from this, our analysis okay. is 8 million. Can you remember? Yes. Therefore, NCI would be entitled to what stake? to 20%. Therefore, shares owned by NCI will be 20% of 8 million shares, which is what? 1.6 million what? Shares. Hence, the fair value is, what is the market price? For this purpose, we have the market price is 3 naira. 50 cover times 1.6 million shares. That will approximate how much? 5,600,000. That's 5,600,000, 5 5.6 million. Okay, we are able to close this order. Not two. We have dealt with note two to some degree, okay? But if you remember, if you have intercompany balance, what do you do? You eliminate. And what does that mean? If you recall from our investments, apart from the equity investment we had in Chelsea, there is equally a bond investment in Chelsea. Can you see it? If you see, there's a bond investment in Chelsea of 2.5 million. But when you go to Chelsea's book, let me go up to the question. You find out that Chelsea issued bond of 4 million, which was given to us in the information. And of that 4 million, 2.5 of it was borrowing from Arsenal. Which then means there is an intercompany balance with respect to borrow of how much? 2.5 million. What should we do? We need to eliminate intercompany balance. Therefore, we eliminate that investment in bond of 2.5 million against the bond borrowing of Chelsea of 2.5 million. Which means once you do that, what will be left with Chelsea is two, 4 million minus 2.5, which is 1.5. We have elimination of intercompany bonds, investment, and balance. Between who? Arsenal and Chelsea. and Chelsea. Now, an investment is an asset with a debit balance. Why the borrowing is a liability with a credit balance. And to eliminate an asset, what do you do? You debit it, which means I'll oh, no. you credit it. I'll credit the bond investment of what? Arsenal? And I'll debit my liability to eliminate the bond liability of who? Chelsea. With what? With 2.5 million. We'll cross that order also. I'm sorry, Mr. Mewa. Yeah. 
Could you please re-explain this um, elimination of the intercompany board? Yes. Remember that the subsidiary wanted to borrow money. And bond is an instrument of borrow, similar to go to bank and borrow. Now, he has borrowed 4 million from people, which shows that liability. But of that 4 million, 2.5 million was borrowed from the parents, which means 1.5 million was borrowed from other people. Therefore, the position of the standard is to show a single economic position. You can't be owing yourself because both the parent and subsidiary are considered to be one. Which means, what is your net borrowing? It's 1.5. Do you get what I'm saying now? It's like yes. husband and wife. Therefore, if they say, what is the family's borrowing? You net it up. You can't say, my husband is owing me, I'm owing. You understand what I'm saying now? In that situation, we eliminate. I remember, this is not limited to borrowing. Every form of happening balance, be it borrowing, be it receivable, be it anything, have to be eliminated. And that's what we have done. Okay, furthermore, we were told that in note two, the last paragraph, the other equity investment of Asna are carried at fair value. Let me show you. Note two. This last paragraph. Sorry. This last paragraph. says that the other equity investment of Asna are carried at fair value on 1st of April 2011. As at 1st March 2012, this had increased to 0.8 million, which means we need to recognize a fair value change. But before we recognize that, what was the value before? If you check, the value before is this amount. It was 20 million. Not 20 million, 2 million. Now, 2 million, 2 million has sorry. increased to 2.8 million. Therefore, I need to recognize my fair value gain on financial assets. What is the fair value? Fair value as of today. 2.8 is 2.8. What was the fair value as at the beginning? 2 million. Two million. Therefore, there's a gain of what? 800,000. And this fair value gain on other equity investments will be reported in the group profits. Therefore, what do you do? You debit your financial asset investment and you credit. This game was made by the period. Therefore, NCI has no participation. 800,000. Okay. Now, Hello, sir. You... yes, sir. Please, the bond investment that was cancelled out. Yes. Is the interest not supposed to be cancelled? We can't hear you. Your network is bad. We can't hear you. Can you chat me up? You can put it on the chat. We can't hear you. Your network okay, is... I said the, the board investment. Okay, it's, sir. Okay, sir. It's still breaking. Okay, sir. Send the chat. Yeah. Okay. Now let us go back to this information. What is the relevance of this information? 
The information says Arsenal bought 1.5 million shares in Baka on 1st October 2011 for the sum of 6 million. Taking that into consideration. And as of 31st March 2012, Baka's retained profit has increased by 2 million over the value on 1st of October 2011. How do we account for our sources? Who can remind us? Equity method. Okay, accounting for investment in BACA, given that BACA is an associate. What method do we use? Equity what? Method. In that light, what will I do? My equity method will start with first the value of investment I made in Baka, which we all agreed to, to be six million. And from there, I start to participate in the profit of what? Baka. And the information given to us here says that from the date Baka was acquired, Baka was acquired on 1st of October 2011, six months ago. And that from that six months to today, the profit of Baka has increased by 2 million, which means that is our post acquisition profit. Therefore, we'll take our percentage. Share of, let me qualify it post-acquisition. Share of what? Post-acquisition profit. And what share are we going to have? I don't know the percentage yet, even though somebody gave it to us before, but let us determine that percentage. Let me go down here to quickly show it so that we can know why Baka was considered and associates. First, what is the stake? Percentage holdings in Baka. We acquired how many shares? 1.5 million mm -hmm. out of what? 5 million shares. Yes, and that approximate what somebody gave us what? 30%. 30%. Is that 30%? I will consider it. Yes. Okay, this is what? 100. Okay. Remember, this entry you pass means that you are recognizing increase in the investment in BACA because of share of profit. And you are recognizing income in the group profit or loss to the tune of how much? 600,000. We we'll take note of that. Now, let's move further. I will have closed this and sum it up to be 6.6 .6 million. But remember that before you start a question, you must read all of the question to know whether there are other information that may affect it. And let me quickly go to the other information that affect this. I'll go back to the question. In not, sorry. In notes three, in the last paragraph, can see it here. Asna sold goods valued at four million naira to back at margin of ten percent on twenty fifth of March twenty twelve, and as at thirty first of March twenty twelve, which was the year end, twenty five percent of the goods had been sold. Who can interpret that? What has happened? Who can interpret that? Um, it means that as not good good goods to Bakara and as at the um the first of March, seventy five percent of the goods remain unsold. Yes. So we have to um calculate our um 
unrealized profit. Which means there's an unrealized profit in this case. We we'll move further. Unrealized profit on sales made by Asna to Baka. What was the sales value? The sales value was um, four million naira. And we are told that margin, remember, margin means profits on sale ratio, Abby. Margin of what? 10%. Now, what that means that the profit made at the point of sale is your margin times the sales value. Now, margin and sales go on and on. Imagine they gave us markup, we have to convert. Imagine they gave us cost and margin, we have to convert. But in this case, we are not converting because margin goes along with sales, which means the profit there is 10% of how much? Mm -hmm. One million. Ten percent of four million. Four million. What is that? That is four hundred what? Four hundred thousand. Okay. Of this thousand, what is unrealized in it? Unrealized profit is the percentage of unsold goods, Abby, yes. times that profit. Yeah. Is that not? What percentage yeah. was unsold? If 25% had been sold, it means 75% are unsold. 75% of 400,000. Give me how much? 300,000. 300,000 is your realized profit, Abby. Yes, sir. But remember that you don't have control of an associate. Therefore, the way we'll have eliminated the unrealized profit in full in a subsidiary, we can't do that in an associate because my stake in an associate is just 30% equity which means I am not party to the other 70%. Any profit I've made from the associate in relation to the other 70% is dim realized. I don't know them. The portion that is unrealized is the portion that affects my 30% stake. Hence, Asna share or Asna share in this unrealized profit, which it need to reverse, is just what 30 percent. Remember, the stake of us in Baka is 30 percent. 30 percent of what 300,000, which is what 90. Anytime you are making an adjustment that affects the profit of an associate, which will affect the shareholders, it's only going to affect the investor to the two of his stake. Remember, there's no control over an associate, and that's why we don't consolidate. Therefore, you cannot take the responsibility of what you don't control. And invariably, what do we do? We debit the profit of us now because we are reversing the profit deemed not to have been earned, and we credit its investment because that value of investment has been overstated by the share of profit. Therefore, what do you do? Investment in what? In Baka. And that is how much? 90. 90,000. This 90,000, remember I told you I left something blank. Yeah. 
I didn't close it because I'm aware of the fact that I need to adjust for unrealized profit on inventory. How much? 90. And that gave me what? 6, 5, what? 10. As the carrying amount. As at the reporting what? Date. Now, let me attend to the question uh, Daria wanted to ask. Daria says, are we not supposed to cancel out interest paid and interest received on the bond? The answer is yes. But remember, interest, expense, and income are in the income statement. And this is not the income statement. This is the balance sheet. They do not constitute balance as at the reporting dates because they have been paid and received. Therefore, there's nothing to eliminate at balance sheet level. Rather, you eliminate interest income with interest expense relating to intercompany in your consolidated statement of profit or loss. I think that is fair. Supposing they are not paid and received, it then means that in our balance sheet, a bad element of interest payable and interest receivable. And once we have set them to be intercompany, we'll eliminate at that level. Thank you very much. Now, let's go back to the question. We've dealt with all of note one. We've dealt with all of note two. And note three, we've dealt with some. Now we are taught something here. In note three, we are taught that Aston usually sell goods to Chelsea at a profit of 50%. No, sorry, at cost profit of 50%, yes. And during that year, the recorded activity shows that Asna has made sales of 16 million to Chelsea. But Chelsea claimed that he has only purchased goods worth 14.5 million, which means there is a difference of 1.5 million. What causes this difference? If you come here, they said something here. On the 28th of March, 2012, Asna sold goods and despite goods to Chelsea, which Chelsea did not record. Remember, 28 March is about two, three days to the year end. Goods were dispatched to Chelsea, but Chelsea didn't record until they were duly received on 3rd of April, which means there was goods in transit between 28th of March and 3rd of April. And we're told that this accounted for that difference between the 16 million and the 14.5. Which means we need to quickly recognize goods in what transit as an adjustment. Adjustments for goods in transit. First adjustment. To recognize my JIT, I recognize my increase in group inventory because that inventory was not captured because it was in transit. And that will increase the indebtedness of the subsidiary, given that they eventually received it only for a time lag. And how much was it? 1.5. Therefore, I'll come here to say trade payable of whom? Chelsea. How much? 1.5 million. How do you get 1.5 million? That is 16 million minus 14.5. That was the difference. But there's a problem here. The problem is that when the goods were transferred, they were transferred at cost plus profit. Recall, 
the policy or arrangement made by Arsenal at every point of making sales to Chelsea. As reported here, it says that this is made at cost plus 50%, which means we need to go back and consider the necessary adjustment to eliminate unrealized profit embedded in that JIT. What that means, I'll also adjust for what? Unrealized profit on goods in transit. This adjustment would not have been necessary if the goods were transferred at cost. Now, what is my unrealized profit on JIT? Now, all what I've transferred is 1.5. Therefore, I need margin to apply on the value of the JIT. But unfortunately, I don't have margin. What I have is markup. How do I know it was markup? Because they said cost plus. Cost plus means the profit is marked up on cost, which means I have a markup of 50%. Markup of 50% is 50 over what? 100, have you? Which means if you go by our principle, 50 means the profit. I'll call it P. Why 100 means the what? The cost. Therefore, to convert markup, margin, what do you do? Remember the expression of margin is profit over selling price. Therefore, to obtain profit over selling price, you need to know that your selling price is a function of your what? Of your cost plus profit. Which means in that case, since my profit is 50, I substitute it here. Since my cost is 100, I substitute it here. Since my profit again is 50, I substitute it here. What do I have? 50 over what? 150, which simply can be seen to be one third. What that means that I cannot come back to say my unrealized profit on JIT is one third of the value. One third of the value. What's the value? 1.5. 1.5. And that gives me 500,000 naira. Therefore, my ad accounting entry will be who made the sales? Arsenal made the sales. Have we? Yes. And in that case, Arsenal has made that profit which we are to revert. And what will I do? I reduce the group profit, the unrealized profit, and I reduce the group inventory because it has been overstated as a result of the GIT. How much? 500,000. We move further. If you also go back to the question under note three, under note three, here we are also made to know that on 30th of March 2012, Chelsea remitted to Arsenal cash which was not received by Arsenal until 2nd of April. Probably Chelsea deposited money in the bank into Arsenal's account. Due to one reason or the other, it did not reflect or impact that account until 2nd of April, which means as at the year end, Chelsea has recognized that I have defrayed some of my obligations. 
But Asna did not recognize it because he has not physically seen the money in the account. Therefore, we are told that that accounted for the remaining difference in our current account. And what is the difference? If we come back here, we are made known that the intercompany account from Asna perspective is 4.4. But Chelsea is saying, no, I'm not owing 4.4. I'm owing what? 1.7. Therefore, that triggers reconciliation. Intercompany reconciliation. We need to reconcile. Intercompany reconciliation. As not receivable and Chelsea's in payable. All figures in thousand. Now, what were the balances as per account? That is 4.4. This said no, it's 1. .1. what? Seven. Now we are told that the difference in that account, before this difference, remember that we adjusted for goods in transit. Can you remember? Can you remember goods in transit? We said there were goods worth 1.5 million transferred that Chelsea did not capture in his book because as at that reporting date, he has not received it, even though he later received it a day after. Therefore, we said we should credit trade payable of Chelsea, which means since the goods was eventually received only for the delay, therefore Chelsea still had an obligation to the tune of that amount of goods, which is 1.5. That credit will increase the balance by one point. Now, if you check it, in our mind, this is supposed to agree after this adjustment. But shockingly, it did not agree. And I think that is what led to this information given to us here, which says, which says, the payment accounted for the remaining difference in the current account, which means the remaining difference in the current account is the difference between the 4.4 million and 3.2 million. Which then means that we need to go ahead and recognize cash in what? Transit. Therefore, I need to quickly recognize what? Cash in transit. And remember, if we now realize that certain sum was paid by Chelsea, only that Asna received it a little bit later. Therefore, it means Chelsea has actually paid something. And at that point in time, we will recognize the receipt of that cash in the group through Arsenal. And we are going to recognize that Chelsea has defrayed part of its obligation, which will reduce the receivable in the book of Arsenal. By how much? By the difference that is unreconciled. What is unreconciled is the difference between 4.4 and 3.2, which is how much? 1.2. Which means I'll come here to say adjustment for CIT, cash in transit, is how much? 1.2. Remember, a credit to a receivable account is a reduction, which means I've successfully reconciled this intercompany, which means this is now the agreed 
balance. And what do you do with the agreed balance as an intercompany balance? What do you do? We've done it today with the loan. We eliminate. Eliminate intercompany balance. Remember, the trade receivable is 3.2 and the trade payable 3.2. Therefore, to eliminate receivable, I credit because it already exists in the debit balance. To eliminate payable, I what? I will debit it because it already exists in a credit balance with 3.2 million. Any questions? Now, let's go back again. I believe we've dealt with all of note one, we've dealt with all of note two, we've dealt with all of note three, and we now move to note four. Note four says what? Note 4 says, impairment test was carried out on 30th of March 2012. And we're told that the goodwill has been impaired to the tune of 2.4 million. Now, if goodwill has been impaired to, to the tune of 2.4 million, it means we are going to reduce the amount of goodwill by 2.4 and charge it to our profit or loss, which will affect the subsidiary's profit. But the question is this, impairment loss on goodwill will only affect NCI if NCI is party to that goodwill. And NCI will be party to that goodwill only when NCI is accounted for at fair value. Okay, that is when we can have a full goodwill, if you remember what we discussed yesterday. Otherwise, if NCI is measured a proportionate share of net assets, what you will have is partial goodwill. How do we know, even though we have not computed our goodwill, how do we know whether the goodwill is partial or is full? It's for us to refer to the accounting policy of the group. Remember here that the accounting policy says Arsenal policy is to value non-controlling interest at what? At fair value. Which means, invariably, any goodwill I have will be full goodwill. And in that case, I have to share the loss between the NCI and the period in the proportion of the share profit or loss. Therefore, I come in. I'll say, note four, impairment, loss on goodwill, and I'll emphasize full goodwill, so that that will remind me that even though I'm reducing the profits, not group profit, but profit of subsidiary, I'm reducing subsidiary's profits. But this will affect the group profit because of Asna's portion at what rate? 80%. And the balance will affect what? NCI at what rate? 20%. Why the goodwill will be reduced by way of credit of how much? We said 2.4 million. Now, 80% of 2.4 million and 20% of 2.4 million. Who can give me that? 1,920,000. 80 80% is 1,920,000. 920,000. And 20 is what? 480. That's nice. Now, that brings us to the end. But again, remember, all of what we have done before, we're just working to solve or to simplify all our processes. 
But what we now need to do is to yes. sign out the three principles. Can you remember the three mechanisms? One, let us ascertain the good will, if any. Goodwill. Let us see whether goodwill exists. What is my cost of business combination? Share. Investment of Arsenal in Chelsea. Remember, we got 29 million. We got 29 million, 120. Twenty-nine million one hundred twenty. What is the value of non-controlling interest which was measured at fair value? And remember we measure NCR at fair value? Okay, NC at fair value was five point six million. That gives me 34,720. I'll compare that to the fair value of the acquired net assets as at date of acquisition. Acquisition. We have the share capital, which was 8 million. We have the share premium. which was 2 million, if you refer to your balance sheet. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we have the pre-acquisition reserve that we have more or less, which we said was 18 million. But this is subject to fair value adjustment. Remember, we have fair value adjustments. The first adjustment was plant that will fair value upward, if you remember, not one, by 3 million, which you said we should credit to reserve. And second one is deeper tax liability you recognize of how much? 1 million, which was charged to our pre-acquisition reserve. That gives us net of what? 20. Is that correct? This sum up to 20. Now, what does that give us? This should give me 30. Therefore, what is my full goodwill? 4 million 720. 4 million 720,000. With my sheet is complete. Let me create, let me drag it down so that I can copy this. I can cut this off. Take it off.
Okay, I'm back. Therefore, what is my full goodwill? My full goodwill is 4720. Less my what? In payment part. Yeah. I remember I in payment loss was 2.4. Therefore, what is my consolidated goodwill? 2320. 2000. 320. Thank you. This is my acquired goodwill. That is that. Now, the next order is the order that will assist me to carry out the following adjustments. Okay. First, I need to do adjustment to my share capital. And my share premium. Remember, it's only Arsenal share capital and premium that will be recognized. And what we have The balance we had as at 1st of April 2011 for my balance sheet were 15 million and 3.6. I remember there was a share exchange as a result of acquisition. And if you remember, we exchanged 10 million shares, which we value as 24 million. And we said here that we should increase the share capital by 10 and increase the share premium by 14. Which means if I do that, I'll come here. 10. And what? 14. Remember, we derived them. And that gives me what? 25. And what? 46. 40. Is it 40 or 50? 17. 17. 17. Is it? Is it 17? Six? Yes. Yes. Where is it? 36 plus 14. It's 36, not okay, 36. 36. I thought it's 36, sorry. It's 36. Pa probably I've not eaten. <laughs> you also need to be careful of such mistake in the exam. Because sometimes what your mind is writing is different from what your hand is writing. Okay, now let me do the final one, which is consolidated retain earnings and NCI as at the reporting dates. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, mute your system, Sadiq.
I'm trying to draw up a line, straight line. And this is a straight line. This is not, please use your own ruler. But from my own perspective, <laughs> this is a straight line. Consolidated, retained earnings. Why I have NCI. First, we start with Arsenal's reserve. And if you remember, Arsenal's reserve is broken into opening and for the year, which gives me 3,200. Please always check my figures. Now, NCI was measured at acquisition date fair value, which we have to recognize. How much was it then? We even have it here, 5.6. 5.6. OK, now, share of profit. Chelsea's profit. That will be done in ratio 80-20. Remember, Chelsea's profit post-acquisition. From our analysis here. Was 8 million. Therefore, the 8 million will be shared between ASNA and NCI. 8 million times 8, that's 6.4 and 1.6. Now we'll now pick all adjustments that affect group profit and NCI one by one, starting from the beginning. Now there's an adjustment we failed to recognize. I'm just seeing it now. Remember we had deeper cash payments. Can you recall? Which we have looked for the present value. And this present value was as at 1st of April 2011. But we are reporting now as at 31st of March 2012, which means the discount ought to have been unwound, which means interest on it on the basis of the order rate, which was 10% supposed to have been accounted for. We've not done that. Let me quickly do that somewhere here. Let me put it unwinding of discounts in the present value of our DCP. And we are doing this as a 31st March, 2012. What is the finance cost? The finance cost is the cost of capital times the opening balance, which in this case, the cost of capital was 10%. The opening balance was 5120. It disappeared. Times. Five one cents. The balance brought what forward, which is 10% multiplied by 5120. That will give me what? 512,000. That is a finance cost, which will be charged to the group profits. And which will be used to increase my deferred consideration, which is a liability. How much? 512. Now let me start with that adjustment. Finance cost on DCP is 512. Finance cost on DCP is 512, is a charge negative. It doesn't affect NCI. 
Now we'll pick all these adjustments one by one. Adjustment that affect profits or NPI. Okay, we've done one of DCP. Okay, now there's this additional depreciation. This that affects NCI and the parent for eighty one twenty. Depreciation adjustment on plant four eighty one twenty. Which other adjustment? The unknown realized persons. Yeah, we are following it step by step. Uh, next okay. is fair value gain. Remember, fair value gain of 800. Okay. Uh, let me pick them one by one. Another adjustment is share of profits of associates. And another one is the unrealized profits. Therefore, I'll pick the three at the same time. 800, 690. Fair value gain on financial assets. Positive 800. Share of associate loss. A profit. That's backer. 600. And unrealized profit on inventory. To backer, negative sixty. Which other one? I thought that one is ninety. Okay, ninety. Okay, I'll correct it. Thank you. Okay. That is backer. We've done with backer. That's six hundred. Now, all your last property, we've done that ninety. Now we have unrealized profit on JIT 500. Okay, we'll do that one. Okay, let me quickly do that one. This was said to be 90, not 60. Unrealized profit on goods in transit, GIT. That is, I think that's, sorry, that's 500. No, it's not yet. It's under parent. That is 500. What other information do we have? Five hundred. Intercompany balance does not affect profit. Now we have payments. Nineteen twenty and four eighty. In payment of goodwill. Nineteen twenty and four eighty. Okay. If there's anything, we'll bring, we'll come back to insert it. But I don't think I've seen any other adjustment. Let's start from the beginning again to check whether there's an adjustment we've left out.
I think there's no other adjustment. Let us sum it up. Press your calculator, 3200 plus minus 512 minus 480 plus 800 plus 600 minus 90 minus 500 minus 1920. Please confirm I may be wrong from my own addition. Let's see, I see 66. NCI is what? 6,600. 6? 6. 6,600. Six. Six, is that correct? Yes. yes. OK. Now let's look at our balance sheet. I'll just copy this balance sheet because the main work has been done. Let me switch to my Kindle where I can assess the text. Okay, now let me see my balance sheet here. I'll just cut it up. Okay, now we can see the balance sheet at a glance. Now, let me check the test, whether we pass certain tests. What is our consolidated retained earnings? We pass the test. What is our NCI? We pass the test, okay. What's our investment in associates? Asset is sixty five ten. The asset we are having here is 60.23, check. I'll go back and let's check. Okay, let's just pick it one by one. Remember, we had this adjustment of 300 and 600. I'll come back to our asset. Remember, we have this two eights. Goodwill, remember, we have impaired it to this. Remember, our goods in transit and the adjustment. Remember our reconciliation and the elimination. Okay, and remember this also. Now share capital, remember it was 25,600. And remember non-controlling interest is 6,600, yes. Our bond, remember the elimination of that two five. Different tax, remember the 1 million adjustments. Trade payable, remember the elimination. 
and the recognition of the goods in transit and different consideration remember this and this now let's go back i don't think there's a typo here 620 6023 6023 plus 28 is not this which means there's something wrong there let's go back to the source let's check the source and see what they got investment in associates what did they get now look at it i think there was a typo see investment in associates what they got here can you see cost of investment 600 and share of profit 600 this is 90. there's a typo here which make it 6510 and it's 6510 that you have here, not 6023. 6510 plus 28 is what's supposed to give us our figure here, which then means that I will go back here to correct for it in my. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it back here. Let me just use my annotation pen to say this is wrong. This is. Five, what was it? Five what? Six, five, one, zero. Six, five, one, zero. Okay, thank you. Six five one zero. Six five one zero plus this. What will it give me? Will you give me what? Nine. Eight three one zero. Is it eight or nine? It's nine. The initial nine. thing there was correct. Okay, initial thing there was correct. Yeah. Okay, which means the typo only. Okay, that one was correct. The typo only existed here. Okay, mm -hmm. when you now add everything together, that shows our right. balance sheet. Any question? Mm. Any question? Yes, sorry, sir. Yes. Yes, sorry, please. I would like you to explain um, how we determined uh, where we go back as an associate. Explanation again, sir. Okay, I'm coming. Now, where we go back and associate? Yes, sir. Um, Okay, this 6510, Abby? Yes, sir. Yes, this 6510, go back here. This is how we got it. Remember, asset is accounted for using equity method. And that is made up of investment in back, six million. Without working if on yet. Mute. We shared profit, thirty percent of two million six hundred, and there's unrealized profit of ninety. Everything sum up to six five ten six five one zero, and that's how we obtain our carrying amount as at the end of the year. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? 
So that will call it a day. Sir. Yeah. Sir, in the same light, um, I recall that yesterday, or rather, from the um, question itself, profit for the year ended for the associate mm. was four thousand. Mm -hmm. But we used uh, post acquisition, which is two thousand, as opposed to four thousand. I didn't get what you mean. I'm saying that um, you had told us initially that when you see something like this, the retained earning is separated, that it is not cumulative, that the one for the year is the one for that year. No, I think you are not getting the... Hold on, I'm trying to save something for you guys. Okay. And I'll come back to you. Hold on, I'm trying to drop the solution. Do I have a choice? This already. Okay, I've dropped the solution. Now, can you repeat your question now? Um, okay, sir. I think I've found the solution anyway, but um, I was asking why we used 2 million as opposed to 4 million, but there's an additional information that says that profit increased by 2 million yes, uh, that for that period. Yeah. I remember that as you said, you share post acquisition profit. 
You don't do anything with pre-acquisition profit of asset state because it's already embedded in the pricing you made. Yeah. Does that clarify? It? Yes, it does. However, if if um, they didn't give us that clause, that um, yeah, that the profit increased mm -hmm. by that amount, basically telling us that that's the post-acquisition um retained earnings yeah what do we how do we now compute the post acquisition it's profit? Very simple now At, yeah they will provide you the reserve for two period at minimum and from there you can analyze what is the pre what is the post okay so it must be provided like that uh, mm -hmm. it might be provided in any manner the manner is that you give me minimum of two variables for me to ascertain anything. You can't give me one and two unknown, and you want me to solve the problem. Which yes, means if you, give me, if you give me the retained profit at the acquisition, you yeah. either give me how much has it increased by or reduced by, or you give me what is the retained profit at the end so that I can make my comparison. Exactly. So, which is why when I now looked at the statement that was given, the difference between 2011 April and uh, March 2012 was a decrease yes. of 2 million, not yes. an increase of 2 million. Yes, which means in the first six months before acquisition, they had a net loss of 4 million. Oh, oh. oh, oh. so the adjustments. Okay, okay. Because if you let me show the balance sheet for people to see it, that's the question itself. If you check here, this is six million at the beginning, Abby. Now, in that year, they made four million. But we are told that, let me draw it up here. First of April. Let me come down. First of April, 2011. 31st of March, 2012. Yeah, we are told it is 6 million. Yeah, we don't know what it is, but we know that between this period and this period, they've made 4 million. That's what this information is. Which means at the end of the year, they've made that much, 10 million. Now, acquisition took effect. Yeah. This is Bates Baker was, I won't say was acquired. The day we invest in Baker, investment in what? In Baker, which was 1st of October. 2012, no, 2011. Check, this is six months before. This is six months after. Now, we are now told that the profit made from October 1st to 31st of March had increased by how much? Two million. Which means, out of 4 million, 2 million was made in the later part of the year, which also means that 2 million was made in the earlier part of the year. And which shows that the reserve of BACA as at acquisition was 6 plus 2, which is what? 8 million. But because we are not doing subsidiary here, we are not looking at the accounting for subsidiary, which will have made use of this pre acquisition. But what we are interested in in associate is what? the post-acquisition profit, which we now went ahead to share. Does that answer your question now? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Any other question? Um, yes, please, Mr. Muiwa. Yeah. Um, so, I just want to confirm, if we have negative goodwill. Yes. Okay, so we are to take it to the um, retained earnings. That's, a, that's the consolidated yes. retained earnings. Yes, I think we did that yesterday morning. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So is it going to be um, is it going to be for the parent alone or for the subsidiary yes, or the, the parent, parent and NCI? Because subsidiary, uh, sorry, NCI 
is not party to that transaction. It's a bargain purchase, it's a negotiation arising from the acquisition that was made based on the purchase consideration offered by the parent to the former shareholders of the subsidiary. And that's why the entire gain arising from bargain purchase is reported directly in group profit. Now, let me share something of my, uh, what's it called with you guys? Um, let me share my text from Hindu, where such question was asked somewhere. I hope you have seen the solution. I've uploaded it. Please confirm receive. So people cannot open it. Uh, that means if they can't open it, it's as a result of the application. Uh, there's nothing I can do over here. At least if others can open it, it means you need to upgrade or check your system. Okay, let me go to, I think chapter six. Oh, okay, chapter five spoke about gain on bargain purchase. Let me now go to, there are some end of chapter questions that I put together. And that will speak to, okay. Gain, can you see here? Gain on bargain purchase is recognized when negative good will represent an outcome of the acquisition data accounting of a business combination. The gain on bargain purchase is to be credited to the profit or loss upon acquisition, and it is only attributed to the parent, as non-controlling interest is not a party to the transaction that may have given rise to such the one gain. Is that that answers that question there. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Any other one? Please, where can I get this material? Which material? The one you are using. Which one am I using? I didn't get it. <laughs> Be specific about the question. I didn't get your question. I mean this textbook. The textbook is on Kindle. Yes. You can go and buy on Kindle or you can buy the art copy in bookshops. You can go to White Circle or some other teaching center or anywhere they sell it. Do you get it? Okay, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay. sorry. Yeah. Um, sorry, impairment loss. Apart from deducting impairment laws on goodwill specifically, apart, apart from deducting it straight away on the goodwill, the full goodwill, there is no further treatment to impairment laws. Uh, that means you are not yes. you are not with us. You are with us, but not in spirit. Can you go back to this? What happened here at the point of determining consolidated retain earnings and NCI? Oh, sorry, I've seen it. You've seen it? Yes. Mm -hmm. It happened yes. like that. You know, this early morning, even me, I've not yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me just, let me leave you out with this. And I hope you have downloaded it. I'll leave you out with this as we wrap up the class. Okay. Um, I just want you to have a few because you need to have full head and inspiration as you walk into your examination hall.
<laughs> and God bless you all. For some reason, the suggested solution is not opening. Hello? The suggested solution is not opening.